He's a singer. And he's a man that can shake, rattle and roll. And he takes us down memory lane week after week with Where Are They Now? and the Song of the Week. To finish the show, it's our pop encyclopedia, Shane. Hey. <laughs> good to be here. End of the show. 28 the show. I'll tell you what, Mitch was good this week. Wasn't good to see Mitch. Yeah, good to see Mitch Marsden. He's a wonderful icon of New Zealand rock and roll. He's one of the old rockers from way back. I met uh, Midge in Wellington when he was in Barry and the Breakaways. That's how far I've known him for a long time. And it's nice to be working with him again. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's why uh, uh, Midge is on the show today, of course. We have got the busiest weekend for baby boomers. We have. I mean, we've got everything for you to go to. Uh, There's myself and Midge. Mm. I'm fortunate enough to be working with them again at the Blockhouse Bay end of summer blues festival and that's going to be on april 2nd this is coming saturday this coming saturday yeah so we're about to um a- apparently it's in the primary school at the back of the blockhouse bay shops there there's a school there called the blockhouse bay primary school and it's on their big grounds that they've got out there and we expect you all to come along have a ball there's refreshment tents and all sorts everything's there that you want and food stalls and uh, you can sit back and um, there's a lot of band- indigo blue um, and various other bands, all local musicians, may I add, because we all live out that part of Auckland these days. <laughs> Midge is just down the road, so yeah. here we are. Oh, it's kind of looking great. forward to it, yeah. Well, it's part of that busy weekend we see. Yeah, and, and of the course, the very next day, Sunday, the third. Yeah, April, Sunday, the third. Oriwa. Yeah, Oriwa. And if you get up to Oriwa on the Sunday, if you get over the Saturday with us, <laughs> you go up there and you'll get Tom Sharplin, and they're doing a raise the funds. They're calling it the Quake Day Out which is great, and they're raising funds for the Christchurch earthquake victims and people, and all the money's going down there. Incidentally, so is the money from our concert. Mm. Uh, any, yeah. any profits they make, it all goes down to Christchurch, Christchurch, which is great to see so many people out there doing oh, it for everybody, wonderful. you know, yeah. and we really need to. And uh, apparently in the Arewa gig on the, on the Sunday the 3rd, um, I think John Key might be there. I'm not certain. Um, there's talk of, it, they, they talk of it. And, of course, uh, Bob Parker, the mayor of Christchurch, mm-hmm. will be there too. So... Could be a great day out. So you've got a great weekend ahead of you. Yeah. You've got plenty to do. Yeah. No complaints. End of summer. Wow. Now, Shane, wasn't it wonderful? The beach hop. Just a quick mention about the beach hop. Well, I'm just getting over the yeah. beach hop. I mean, now we're <laughs> off to the next one. Um, but the beach hop was fabulous. What a, what a experience. I mean, I couldn't believe the thousands of people there and the great Aussie bands they had playing. Um, the Retro Rockets that I worked with, they were fabulous. I love him. And, uh, of course, Noddy, the guy that runs the whole thing, I don't know how he does it. He keeps cool, calm, collected, and he has like 60,000 extra people in town. And the place is jammed. It's, uh, and everyone's having a ball. The classic cars, I never knew they existed, some of them. They're just beautiful cars, beautiful women, beautiful guys. Just everyone was happy. And what can you say? You had a good time. Yeah, I saw yeah, you and you were great. having a ball. Yeah. Uh, Shane, uh, have we got time for a song of the week this week? I don't think we have, but I think we've got time for tune of the week. Again, it's one of the the tunes tunes of the week. week. And the reason for this is Mm -hmm. the fact that, uh, well, a dear friend to us all, I'm sure, it really is when you're grown up with the shadows, Jet Harris. Jet Harris passed away just on March the 18th. Uh, age 71 years old Mm. and Jet you know um, iconic he was iconic iconic, and he was the man he was the man that started the bass thing happening Shane before we go any further reiterate oh did you like that reiterate reiterate, how important are the shadows in the baby boomers life well they they formed my musical tastes Um, you know there was Tommy Steele before that and a few Mm -hmm. Johnny Devlin's and people like that but when the shadows came along, that twang <laughs> after Dwayne Eddy, it was a, it was after Dwayne Eddy. The Ventures and the the Shadows started out in 958. Both bands were formed in 58, and the original Shadows I still think were my favourites because I, I was only a young man and and I know you were too, and and we all had that excitement. It was oh. just. Uh, you know, and they they got out there and did their thing before Cliff Richard went on. The arm for all and of us, wasn't it? the Fenders, it was the Fender guitars, the red Fenders, and everything. And and Jet Harris was the coolest dude. He was a sort of the James Dean of England. You know, he sit there and he played, looked moody and sultry, and played his bass. He looked great. And, didn't and we all wanted to be just like Jet Harris. I Jet met him in 1962 mm. um, in Sydney. At the, uh, they did a concert with the Cliff Richard and the Shadows and various other people, and he was a lovely, lovely man. Believe me. What? Look, let's all go back to the start. Yeah. Now, Jet 
He was born in a place called Honeypot Lane in Kingsbury in North London. Oh hey, Honeypot Lane, now you'd know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and he was born on the 6th of July, 1939. How did he get the name Jet? Jet, yeah, Jet I mean, Harris. No, he wasn't born Jet, oh, oh. it was Terence. So Terence uh, Harris was his name. Terence. But, but he got the name Jet when he was in secondary modern school, which is where you go if you don't pass your exams and get in your 11 plus exam and you didn't get into grammar school, which is the same for me. You went into a secondary modern school. That's what they called it. And uh, he, he was a very good runner, a sprinter actually, and he got to do the 100 yards in under eight seconds or whatever it was, mm. and became, so they nicknamed him Jet. Jet and the name stuck with him, and it's quite a cool name, Jet Harris. You know? <laughs> it was just, uh, so he stood out in a crowd with that name. But it was interesting, you did start off to say what a wonderful life he had, but of course it was one of those pop star spirals. Well, it, now the spiral all started. So it's according to Jet, this is, um, but apparently, Cliff Richard, it's, and it's true, they say, but Cliff Richard was sleeping with Jet Harris's first wife, one of four that he had, wow. but Jet's first wife was Carol Costa, uh, this lady, and, and behind Jet's back, Cliff was having an affair. Mm. And it wasn't, it wasn't just holding hands or anything or heavy petting, they were sleeping together, which everyone would say, no. Cliff didn't do that. He didn't do that sort but of But maybe did. that's what put him off after that, the trouble he got into. <laughs> <laughs> and it's documented that that's the one woman that, that you can all say did sleep with Cliff Richard, yeah. Carol Costa. And of course, Jet was absolutely blown away. And he didn't have time off from the shadows. They wouldn't give him time off. They were too busy working with Cliff and, and working out on their own doing their shows that uh, he didn't have time to sort of adapt to the idea or get over it or, mm. or try and reconcile with his wife. So um, he started drinking and partying. And, and then it turned into a, a numerous arrests for a disorderly behavior, assault, all sorts of things. It started to get really out of control. And his drinking took over. It got real bad. It took 30 years for him to admit that he had a drink problem, poor, poor <laughs> <laughs> guy. <laughs> well, he enjoyed a few drinks on the way. <laughs> but, it, but would you believe he, he fell into, it just fell out of show business mm. and became a laborer. And then he, um, he ended up working on a bus as a bus conductor and various other menial sort of jobs until he ended up in Jersey in the Channel Islands selling cockles and mussels on the beach. The great Jet Harris. The great Jet Harris oh. went through a terrible trauma and then he reached out for help at the end of the, uh, end of the day. They said he was a regular sight around Gloucester where he was living at the time as a drunk, you know, mm. stagging around all the time. Uh, very sad but anyway he suddenly decided he wanted help and he got back on his feet and slowly worked his way back and he met a nice lady, another lady called Margaret particularly, <laughs> um, and he, he was living with her on the Isle of Wight when he got throat cancer two years ago. Oh, that's um, and he's just pulled himself out of the mire and he's doing real good the last 10 years. Uh, he got an MBE, mm -hmm. uh, he got a, um, a, uh, an award from Fender for being an outstanding performer and everything and for you know um, being one of the, the people to introduce the Fender guitar to Europe so yeah. to speak. Um, he had all these accolades coming his way, he was still working hard with his band The Rapiers and, uh, he, and he was still recording a new album, always recording a new album, as we always are. Yeah. But there he was, doing it again, and he got throat cancer. He fought bravely for the last mm. two years, and eventually just submitted on March the 18th, uh, just a week or two ago. And very sadly, my good old mate, Jet Harris, is gone. And I'm I, very I, distraught. Mm. I, I did hear a, a story about him looking into his guitar case one day. <laughs> he was shuffling around in his uh, guitar case, and he found this little note. Note. And on the note was the oh. word surmise. <laughs> we all carry notes in our guitar cases. <laughs> all saying surmise. So I can surmise, Shane, that yes. tonight's yes. tune of the week is going to be... The tune of the week this week is, as we remember Jet Harris, with the Shads at way back in 1961, at his best, and they're playing their great hit, FBI. <laughs>
beautiful song. Yeah, I love it. FBI. It's yeah. one of the first songs I ever tried to learn on the guitar, you know. Uh, wow, sorry, got to have the twang. But uh, did you know? No. Did you know? I never now, knew. Jed Harris had a big impact on Jimmy Page's career and John Paul Jones's career. That hit Jimmy Page being the guitarist and John Paul Jones being the bass player of Led Zeppelin. And what happened was uh, that was one of the first sessions that uh, Jimmy Page ever played on as a session musician. He played rhythm guitar on Diamonds, his huge hit, the one for Tony Meehan. And, yeah, they, he played rhythm guitar. And John Paul Jones played bass and they got John Paul Jones to be their bass player when they went out on the road. This is Jet Harris when he was solo. So uh, that was their first introduction to the music business. So they were out with a pretty wild and crazy guy right to start with. Three wild, crazy guys all together. So we salute Shane. We salute Mr. Jet Harris, MBE. And at the same time, Shane, I say thank you, Shane. Love you. Yeah, done it again. Thank you, Shane. Well, that's our show tonight, and thank you to our guests. I look forward to seeing you again at the same time next week. I'm Jared Smith for The Beat Goes On. Until I see you again in seven days' time, have a great day.